The other day we evaluated a double integral where we had to switch the polar coordinates. And when you switch the polar coordinates, you introduce another factor of r into the integral. And some of you weren't sure where the r came from. So I figured I'll explain um, where the r comes from today. And I'll show you two different ways to, to, um, to determine this. Okay, so roughly speaking, dA can be thought of as the area of a rectangle, you know, a small rectangle. I'm going to put quotes around rectangle because we're not going to use the traditional definition of a rectangle uh, in whatever coordinate system we're using. Okay, so for example, we'll start with our basic Cartesian coordinates. So what is a rectangle? A rectangle, R, is the set of points, x and y, such that, well, there's constant bounds for both x and y. So we'll say maybe a is less than or equal to x, less than or equal to b, and c is less than or equal to y, which is less than or equal to d. Right? And in the Cartesian coordinate system, that's going to look like a rectangle that you learned about in elementary school. So it's going to look like, you know, so maybe here's A and here's B, here's C and here's D. That's going to look like this rectangle here. Right? And what is the area of this rectangle? It's the change in X, which we'll call delta X times the change in y, which is delta y. Okay, and then when you take the limit as this rectangle gets small, so there's some limit you would take, um, this becomes dA is equal to dx dy. So if you're in the Cartesian coordinate system, dA is just dx dy. Nothing crazy happens. But you're interested about polar coordinates. So what is a polar rectangle? Well, it's going to be the same idea. R would be the set of R and theta such that, well, they're bounded by constants. So we'll say R1 is less than or equal to R, which is less than or equal to R2. And theta1 is less than or equal to theta, which is less than or equal to theta2. OK, so this is what it means to be a polar rectangle. R is bounded by constants. Theta is bounded by constant. And now let's take a look at what this, this shape is, and then we could find the area of the shape. And ideally, we're going to have an R. It's going to depend on R. So let's uh, get a nice sketch going. So the line theta equals theta 1 is just going to be a ray out of the origin. And similarly, theta equals theta 2 is also a ray out of the origin. Okay, the line r equals r1, I know I'm using the term line, but the, the equation r equals r1 is going to be a circle with radius r1 centered at the origin. I'll just do this quarter circle because uh, we're only going to care about the part between these two rays. And then similarly, r equals r2 would be a quarter circle or a circle centered at the origin with radius r2. So this is r equals r1 r equals r2. And so our polar rectangle is this region here. Okay, and so what is its area? Its area, A, is equal to, well, what is the area of this slice here? That's the difference in theta over 2 times r2 squared. So theta 2 minus theta 1 over 2. So that's this angle here is theta 2 minus angle theta 1 over 2, because that's just the formula for finding a sector of a circle, times r2 squared. Minus similar argument, theta 2 minus theta 1 over 2 times r1 squared. Right, and we could factor out a theta 2 minus theta 1 over 2. 
Well, theta two minus theta one, we'll call delta theta. So this is delta theta times one half r2 squared minus r1 squared. But this here is the difference of squares. So this is equal to delta theta, 1 half, r2 minus r1 times r2 plus r1. Right? And what we're going to do is let's move this 1 half over here. Okay, and why are we doing this? Well, delta theta, that stays the same. R2 minus R1, that's also delta, that's delta R. And what is this? This is like, this is the average of the two radius bounds. But what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be taking the limit as R1 approaches R2, or maybe they approach somewhere in the middle. Basically, we wanna take the limit as delta R goes to zero. So this value is going to be 2r. And then when we cancel out the 2s, we're just left with r. So this is equal to uh, r delta r delta theta, oops, delta theta. And as we take the limit as delta r and delta theta go to 0, we get dA is equal to r dr d theta, you know, just as the formula says. But let's say you're not a big fan of geometry, right? We did quite a bit of geometry here. How do we figure out this extra factor of r? And that's what, when you would use what's known as the Jacobian. So if you use a different coordinate system other than polar coordinates and you want to figure out what the extra uh, factor is going to be, you use what's known as the Jacobian. So let me show you um, what the Jacobian is and maybe in the future we could do a, a deeper dive. Okay, so here we have Polar coordinates is the, is the transformation x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta. Okay, and so in general, dA is equal to the Jacobian. So there's going to be some matrix, and we're going to find the determinant of that matrix, and then times our, our variables. So what is the matrix? This first column is going to correspond to x. The second column will correspond to y. The first row will correspond to partial with respect to r. The next row, partial with respect to theta. You know, it doesn't really matter the orders that we pick here as long as you're consistent. So the partial of x with respect to r is cosine theta. The partial of y with respect to r is sine theta. The partial of x with respect to theta is negative r sine theta. And the partial of y with respect to theta is r cosine theta. Okay, and we want to find the determinant of this 2 by 2 matrix. So you just go down the main diagonal, subtract off the opposite diagonal. So that's r cosine squared theta minus negative r sine squared theta. It's still dr d theta. All right, and now we want to simplify this. This is r, right? We could factor out an r cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta. Well, you know what that is. dr d theta. This term is just 1, so we're left with r dr d theta. So if you're not a fan of geometry, you could always use the Jacobian to figure out what that extra factor you have to multiply by is. All right. Well, let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.